Christ is risen. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm very glad to see you all today here today in church, and I thank also those who are watching us on the live stream. We thank God that things are coming back to normal and the situation is getting better in our country. But we should keep in our prayers the people who are living in other countries who are not as fortunate as us in getting the pandemic under control. Today, the church celebrates the myrrh-bearing women, St. Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. And in the Gospel reading today, we are taken back in time a couple of weeks ago to the Sunday of the Resurrection, and we are called to remember the events that took place on that early morning. To reorient ourselves a bit more, let us go back to that weekend, a few days before the Resurrection, when Jesus was captured and he was taken to be judged and he was unfairly judged and handed to be crucified. As we remember this, I want us today to picture the state of the disciples and the followers of Jesus in that short time period just before the resurrection. You have this collective of people, this gang of Jesus and his followers, raising up Lazarus, walking into Jerusalem and receiving the reception of the Messiah or the Savior, and then getting their leader captured and executed. The disciples were terrified. They were in hiding. Peter denied knowing Christ three times and hid. None of the male disciples were reported to be at the cruci crucifixion, except the women and John, who was probably the youngest in age. So they were afraid. Last Sunday, we read that they were indoors and the doors were shut since they were afraid. And today, we also read that the women hurried back since they were afraid. So all the followers of Christ were afraid since their master has been caught, <coughs> judged, and put to death. So it is only logical to be afraid, right? If any one of us was in that situation and we were publicly following and cheering for Jesus Christ, seeing him captured and crucified, we would reasonably get afraid and try to lay low for a while. As reasonable people, we calculate, we anticipate when harm is going to come our way, and we activate our fear shield, and we go into hiding. We do this many times and in many ways. We're not condemning those who fear or take precaution. We are only trying to explain a human condition, a physical condition that our bodies carry with it. We notice a disease spreading, and out of fear, whether it is fear for our lives or the lives of the people around us, it doesn't matter. It is the fear of what might happen we activate our fear shield and we protect our existence in this world. This could be anything else, not just a disease or a virus. It could be war, or it could be an economical condition, or it could be a close encounter with death, like in a car accident, for example. There are lots of things in this world that make us afraid. And the state of fear that the disciples and the mirror-bearing women were in today is normal, it is understandable. It is a log logical deduction of the course of the events that have taken place. But amidst this fear, there is something in this Gospel's reading that we are pointed to. There is something important that the myrrh bearers and Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus did that, be careful, Peter did not do, and we'll come back to Peter later. But there's something important that these people did. You see, these women who were afraid also had courage. They had, if you want to call it, a type of crazy courage. Crazy because it is not logical. It is not what someone in their normal mind would do. That courage led them to go and buy spices and go to the tomb. We can imagine this, that if this, these Merber women had their mothers alive and the conversation going on between their Palestinian mothers and themselves, and they were telling them they were going to go buy spices and go to the tomb. You can imagine that type of discussion going on, how their mothers would have prevented them from going to the tomb. But they still went, and Joseph of Arimathea also went, and he went to Pilate to ask for the body of Jesus. Imagine the craziness of doing that, going to the ruler who crucified your leader and asked to get his body. So where was Peter in all of this? Peter, the strong fisherman who proclaimed to Jesus that if all forsook him, he would not forsake him. Where was he? 
Remember, Peter denied Jesus, and from that point on, he had no contact with him after that. He was probably still in low, in a low point mental, mentally, and he was hiding. He had forsaken his master, his beloved Lord. He has run away, and he is truly afraid of the situation because he probably was the oldest and maybe the wisest among the disciples, and he understood what would happen to the followers of Christ in such a situation. And personally, he has probably felt that he was not worthy anymore. That is why the angel singles him out among the disciples and tells the women, make sure that Peter, Peter knows. Make sure that Peter knows, not just that the Lord has risen, but also that the Lord wants him to be in Galilee with the rest of the disciples. Let Peter take courage and come out of hiding because the Lord has risen. So this crazy courage that we see in today's gospel is one of the basic ingredients of faith. Last week, we read about the shortage of faith in Thomas. And today we read about how fear and weakness can be converted to courage with faith. It is like the gospel is teaching us, if you are weak, if you are afraid of this world, have faith, have courage. Depending 100% on your logic and reason will lead us to be afraid a lot in this life. You know why? Because there are so many things that are out of our control. And the biggest driver of fear is the unknowable, the uncontrollable. And if we think we know everything or are in control of everything, then we are arrogant and we are truly deceiving ourselves and acting crazy. This is the true craziness, that we think we can control everything. So we are stu stuck by either living in fear or having faith. Now the question is faith in what? What did the myrrh-bearing women have faith in? What did Joseph of Arimathea have faith in? See, on that day, the myrrh-bearing women might not have yet had the faith that Jesus is the Son of God. But they loved Jesus. They had this burning love in their hearts for Him. The same as did Joseph and Peter and the rest of the disciples and everyone else who met Jesus when He was on this earth. So that love was there in their hearts the same way a parent might love their child and they would go through hell to do anything that their child wants. So this is the fuel that drove the murdering women on that day to go to the tomb and buy spices. It is their love for Jesus. And their love for him was curated and established in time and the time they spent with him when he was alive in the flesh. It did not happen overnight. So amidst the fear that they had in the situation they were in, the love kindled in their heart the need to do something. This, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is the driving force that, should, that we should strive to find in ourselves. We might not have a strong faith today, or we might not even have the love of Christ that these women had, but we can work on nourishing it so that when we come across a situation in our life that, we, that would cause us to be afraid for natural and reasonable reasons, we would take deeper, we would look deeper and locate that love and that faith and then be able to do something, to act. Because if we act without that love and faith in the situation that when in a situation we are in danger or we are afraid, then we're acting out of fake confidence. And we end up not, or we might end up not acting at all and getting depressed and end up living in isolation. So we must have love and faith stored up so that when we can have courage to do what needs to be done when the odds are against us. And that storing up of faith happens by being acquainted with the source of love and with God. We acquaint ourselves with Him by coming to church, by praying, by doing acts of mercy and charity, filling our empty time with learning and understanding the teachings of our church and the scriptures which have in them the wisdom and the, that will enable us to act appropriately in the time of fear and danger. Let us not wait till the last minute when we are in danger, when we are in fear to come to God. Because then, the act of coming to God in the last minute, while in and by itself is an honorable act, it will not give us the benefit against and the tools to deal with the situation that is causing our fear. 
in the sense that it is good that many people have found Christ in this pandemic. But hopefully they will remain getting acquainted with him so that the next pandemic or catastrophe in their personal life, they would be equipped with the faith and courage to not fear. And for those who are living in constant fear, we should proclaim that it is okay not to be in control and to give up control to him who has risen from the dead. May the risen Christ guide your actions and keep you all out of harm's way. And let us all continue to rejoice in his resurrection. Amen.